Hello, dear boys and girls. Hopefully, you have uh, gone through till now that uh, we have done pipe flow both with the help of shell momentum balance and with the help of Navier Stokes equation. And uh, we have also shown how the Navier Stokes equations are helpful in solving this type of problems, right? Rather, Navier Stokes equations are known as the mother of the flow behavior characteristics of fluids. So, if you are accustomed with that, you can solve many, many problems in future wherever you can apply them. Now, we will go to another new thing which I had told you that uh, which I had told you that during the first uh, rather last class I had said that you are looking into the flow through pipe if this is a pipe if this is inlet if this is the outlet then the layers of the liquid or fluid they are why there is a P A inlet and P outlet why this P inlet is more than P outlet or uh, why there has to be right. You know in this connection another thing I tell you which you can obviously look into uh, that whenever uh, you are generating electricity at any point right and there you are generating at a definite voltage and when you are transmitting it and when it is reaching you a lot of voltage getting dropped why because the the medium through which it is coming that is offering a lot of resistance. So, depending on whether your medium is offering resistance for the flow or not that will dictate whether the in at the inlet whatever you are giving that thing will be same at the outlet or not and in this connection I would like to mention that yes till now people, people have developed some or other kind of devices by which you can go even up to minus 100 degree centigrade where there is no resistance of such transit right. But here also in the fluid flow a similar thing we will now, now discuss where why this factor that is inlet to outlet why the pressure is getting dropped right. That means like when you are running if somebody is holding you then you cannot run that is what when you are swimming if somebody is not allowing you to swim over then you would have been swimmed faster. The same thing happens here also when the fluid is flowing some or other factors which are pulling the fluid not to go not to go and this pulling is known as the friction factor right. So, we will now go to that friction factor and uh, that will do yeah that will do like this right this frictional factor we let us define it to be f right and this is nothing but the drag force per unit weighted surface area which is known as fanning friction factor fanning friction factor f which is nothing but drag force per unit weighted surface area or shear stress 
tau s at the surface divided by the product of density times velocity head which is known as rho v square by 2 right. So, let me repeat we define a new term called fanning friction factor or simply it is denoted by f fanning friction factor or simply denoted by f this in many books you may get as lambda or some other whatever at least this word should be there that is called fanning right fanning friction factor right so this fanning friction factor commonly or generally it is denoted by f small f right and this is defined as the drag force per unit surface weighted surface area or shear stress tau s at the surface divided by the product of density times velocity head or density is rho and velocity as is v square by 2. So, this definition if we if we if we follow then we said that this what is this drag force per unit weighted surface area right. Then what is the drag force? Drag force is delta P f that is delta P pressure due to the friction factor. So, delta P f times the cross sectional area that is pi s square and weighted surface area is known as 2 pi r l right. So, drag force is that pressure force times sectional area that is pi r square and weighted surface area is 2 pi r l. So, if it is known then the relation between the pressure drop and friction factor that can be related as f is equal to f is equal to tau s over rho v square by 2 right. So, this we can write as tau s as delta p f times pi r square right divided by 2 pi r l divided by rho v square by 2 right. So, by definition we have said that fanning friction factor is the shear stress tau s right and this shear stress is nothing but you know, drag force or pressure drop due to frictional factor times the times the sectional area that is pi r square divided by the weighted surface area that is 2 pi r l divided by the rho times velocity head that is v square by 2 right. So, we then if this is true we also can write this as delta p f times r right divided by l into rho into v square right because this this 2 this 2 goes off this pi this pi goes off this r this square goes off right then remains delta p r over l that remains right this rho that remains this v square that remains. So, delta p f r by l rho v square which we can also write as delta p f this r as d divided by 2 right l rho v square right. So, now this l rho v square delta p f d this can also be written as now this we can write now delta p f running friction factor as 2 f l rho v square right by d right 
which also we can write in terms of easy remembrance 4 f l rho v square by 2 d right. This we have written in terms of f and delta p. So, the relation between delta p and f is that delta p f is 2 f l rho v square by d or 4 f l rho v square by 2 d. This why this is 4 f we can remember l is the characteristic length rho is the de density d is the l by d is this uh, length dimension non dimensional length rho and v square by 2 that is the velocity head right that is why in this form it is written the 4 f rho l by d or l by d rho v square by 2 right. Now, this we can also equate we know that delta p f is 32 mu v l by d square this we obtained from the previous class that this is known as hagen pezeli's equation. So, from that hagen pezeli's equation if we relate this with 4 f rho l by d v square by 2 right. If we relate them then from here we can write f is equals to right for from here we can write f is equals to 32 by 4 right mu okay by rho right v by v square okay 2 that 2 goes there right. So, this d by l right and and here you have l by d square I think we have covered everything f is 32 by 4 4. So, mu remains mu rho comes down mu by rho then v by v square yes this v square this 2 goes up then d by l which was already there l by d as d by l and this is l by d square right. Then by 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 simply eliminating we can say so this makes uh, 8. So, 8 in times 2 is 16 this is mu ok. So, v v goes up mu by rho. So, 1 v remains right and uh, this 2 also 8 and 2 we have taken 16 mu by rho v and this d and this square this goes out. So, 1 d remains l and l cancels out. So, 16 mu by rho v d which we can easily say 16 over d v rho by mu. Now, d v rho by mu is nothing but n r e right Reynolds number. So, we can simply say that this fanning friction factor is this is true because when we had taken this this was for laminar flow right. So, for laminar flow the fanning friction factor that can be said to be equal to 16 by n r e because n r e is nothing but that is Reynolds number is nothing but d v rho by mu right. So, if this is known then we can say for laminar flow
this f fanning friction factor is nothing but 16 over n r e right none. Whereas, the relation between the fanning friction factor and delta p we can write this is 4 f rho l by d v square by 2 right. This is the fanning friction factor and this is true whether it is flow is laminar or turbulent. This is delta p f for turbulent we can say uh, this can be utilized right. So, once we know the fanning friction factor then we can find out what is the what is the relation between fanning friction factor and your um, pressure drop right. So, pressure drop and fanning friction factor this relation we can say for laminar flow it is very easy 16 by n r e whereas, the relation general relation for delta p f is 4 f rho l by d v square by 2 right. Now, if we look into a problem that a small capillary with an inside diameter of 2.54 into 10 to the minus 3 meter and a length of 0.4 meter is being used to measure the flow rate of a liquid having density of 870 kg per meter cube and viscosity of 1.15 10 to the minus 3 Pascal seconds. Then calculate the flow rate if pressure drop across the capillary is 0 0.07 meter of water having a density of 990.24 kg per meter cube and calculate the pressure drop using fanning friction factor or frictional coefficient or fanning friction factor whichever you call right. So, these two are asked to be done. So, this though this is a easy problem, but we can check how much the difference is if we use fanning friction factor and if we do not use that straight away if we find out then what is the delta p right. So, I repeat the problem a uh, small capillary with an inside diameter of 2.54 into 10 to the minus 3 meter and a length of 0.4 meter is being used to measure the flow rate of a liquid having density of 870 kg per meter cube and viscosity of 1.5 10 to the minus 3 Pascal second. Then calculate the flow rate if pressure drop across the capillary is 0 0.07 meter of water having a density of 990.24 kg per meter cube and also calculate the pressure drop using fanning friction factor right. So, in the first case in the first case when we are asked that calculate the flow rate if the pressure drop across the capillary is 0 0.07 meter of water having density of 990.24 kg per meter cube right. In that case delta P f this can be written as h rho into g right. So, h rho g if we know h is 0 0.07 rho is 990.24 and g is 9.81 right. So, if you multiply them then it becomes roughly equal to say 6 seven nine point nine nine Newton per meter square or roughly we can say six eighty Newton per meter square. 
So, this is the normal H rho G pressure drop. Right? Now, let us look into what it happens when we are taking the other one. Also, we know that delta P f is equals to 32 mu V L over d square from the hagen poiseuille equation. So, 32 into mu that is given as 1.215 right 1.215 10 to the minus 3 Pascal second into V into 0.4 over d square d is given 2.54 into 10 to the power minus 3 so much meter right in whole square. So, this from there already delta p we know 680 right. So, from there we can go this is equals to 680. So, from there we can find out the value of v velocity as 2.54 into 10 to the minus 3 this square times 680 over 2.54 in 10 to the minus 3 whole square this becomes equals to 0 0.01472. So, this is 0 0.298 so much of meter per second right. So, V becomes equals to 0 0.298 meter per second right. So, then the flow rate can be written equals to flow rate is equals to V into pi d square by 4 that is equals to 0 0.298 into 2.54 into 10 to the minus 3 whole square into pi divided by 4. So, this is equals to 1.50998 10 to the power minus 6 so much of meter cube per second right. So, much of meter cube per second. Therefore, we can write n r e is equals to d v rho by mu is equals to 2.54 to 10 to the power minus 3 into 0 0.298 into 870 divided by 1.15 10 to the power minus 3. So, that becomes equals to 572.6 right. So, energy is so much. Now, next it comes that how much fanning friction factor right. So, energy we got 572.6 why did you do energy because from there what we were asked to find out in that calculate the flow rate if pressure drop across the capillary. So, you have to find out the flow rate. Now, to find out the flow rate we had used the hagen poiseuille equation. Now, hagen poiseuille equation is true for laminar flow. So, since hagen poiseuille equation is true for laminar flow, so then you have to also show that the flow is laminar. That is why we have found out the Reynolds number and this has become equal to 572.6 which is in the laminar range. Right? So, we know that laminar range is 200 2100 up to that normal fluid say water it is up to 2100 and if it is a Newtonian fluid then 2100 as well this is the lower and and the turbulence is more than 4000. 
So, within this range that it is intermediate. Uh, so, if it is less than 2100, then it is under laminar flow. So, we have established that it is under laminar flow. So, using Hagen Poiseuille's equation was ok. Now, second part we have to do that is the pressure drop using the fanning friction factor, right. Pressure drop using fanning friction factor delta P f is h rho g right is equals to 0 0.07990.24 into into yeah so we have to find out this okay this we have already found out now the second the fanning friction factor is 16 by nre so 16 by nre means 16 by we have already found out nre as 572.6 so this is nothing but point 0.0279 right if it is point 0.0279 then delta p f fanning friction factor using we know this is 4 f rho l by d into v square by 2 right v square by 2 that is equals to 4 times 0 0.0279 into 890 870 sorry 870 into 0 0.4 into 298 square over it was 298 square into 10 to the power minus 3 square right over 2 times 2.54 into 10 to the power minus 3 right. So, L by D. So, this was to this. Now, this is if you calculate that becomes 678.9 Newton per meter square that is roughly again we can say closer to 680 Newton per meter square right. That means, if we look at with the help of H rho g what we had you gotten for the laminar flow and with the help of fanning friction friction factor what that relation delta P f is 4 f rho L by D v square by 2 that relation we also got almost similar of course, earlier one was a little more if you remember it was it was it was around 680 that is 679.99 is very very uh, closer to 680 whereas, it is 6 point, uh, 678.9. So, it uh, a little less than the earlier, but all this is also closer to that right. So, with this we close uh, we end today's lecture and uh, next we will try to see what is the same for if the flow is turbulent right. Thank you.